Hi everyone, uh, this is a uh, reflection video for our most recent Pogol exercise, the one we finished on uh, Monday, September 23rd. Uh, this one we talked a lot about uh, the concept of uh, ionic strength, and that we refer to as uh, uh, ionic strength is a way that we would um, quantify uh, the ionic environment of a solution, and uh, this will end up having a lot of implications in uh, uh, um, equilibrium and all the equilibrium processes that we're going to learn throughout uh, the next few chapters. And so I'm just going to briefly show you a couple slides on that. Uh, this is from chapter 7.1 in your textbook. And then I'm going to run through a practice problem uh, showing sort of an application of this. All right, so this is what I'm talking about, our most recent POCAL, uh, dealing with ionic strength. And again, we're talking about the ionic atmosphere. So if you have a cation and an anion, the ionic atmosphere uh, refers to the atmosphere of the solution that is close around that cation. So I think we gave an example in class where if you had something like nitrate and potassium, if you had a whole, if you had some nitrate to that, that is going to sort of form the shell around the cation due to the positive interactions between that negative charge and the positive charge cation. And if you had uh, the counter ion to this would be potassium, okay, or maybe sodium, something like that. But at any rate, this is going to form uh, form and, and contribute to this ionic atmosphere around the anion. And basically, what we found was that you know by essentially shielding uh, these uh, anions and cations with this ionic atmosphere, we decrease the effective concentration of it. So. By decreasing the effective concentration, that ended up having some implications on, on the equilibrium processes that we looked at. And so we quantified this by this uh, term called ionic strength. And so ionic strength we called mu here. Let's see, mu. That equals one half concentration of all species right, times this is the charge. Right? We found that both the charge and the concentration played a role. Right? And it turns out that the charge played a larger role. And so if we looked at this example, I don't know if all of you made this, this, was, this is in your textbook, but it's also, it also was on the, the Pogol assignment. And we saw that um, a salt like magnesium sulfate, which both of these have, have two charges on them, so it's Mg2 plus and SO4 2 minus, right? This, these completely dissociate, we call these strong electrolytes. Um, that something like this ended up having a, a, a lot more of an effect on uh, solubility than, say, sodium chloride, which was just uh, singly charged ions. All right, and so what we see here in this case is that as we add, um, in this case we're looking at potassium hydrogen tartate, all right, and so what we can interpret, if you're trying to interpret this, uh, this chart here, you see that as we add magnesium sulfate, we end up increasing the concentration, and that happens, and the same thing happens with sodium chloride. All right, so this is our initial solution here, the potassium hydrogen tartate. Okay, it's 0.03, sorry, this is sort of missing some of these details. But what you see is as you increase the concentration of magnesium sulfate, we increase the concentration of potassium uh, hydrogen tartate. Uh, we increase the solubility of that. Um, and so the reason we say that is because, the reason for this is because our magnesium sulfate completely dissociates, right, we have magnesium 2 plus interacting with our anion and sulfate 2 minus interacting with our cation. And that this charge here uh, contributes to this ionic environment in addition to the concentration. So as we increase the, this, uh, the strength of this ionic environment, we effectively shield these more from each other and allows, uh, and it basically effectively decreases the concentration of both these species, and that will shift the equilibrium and increase the concentration. So that's exactly what we see here, right? And we see that because of the charge from magnesium sulfate, solubility increases at a faster rate with magnesium sulfate than it does with sodium chloride. But they both increase for the same reasons. And glucose, which we found, which we know to be a, a non-charged molecule, so this is a plain old organic, um, as we increase the concentration of that, that has no effect because that does not contribute to the ionic environment. Now you may be sort of surprised to see KCl decreases it, but we also have to keep in mind that what we're looking at here is the solubility of potassium hydrogen tartate. And so potassium here, right, 
is one of the members in our equilibrium. And so by Le Chatelier's principle, right, as we add more potassium, we're going to decrease the solubility because we're going to basically push the equilibrium back towards the, towards the storing materials. Okay? So um, we're going to explore this a lot more in, in detail when we're talking about uh, activity coefficients, which will fall up in the seventh Pogel uh, exercise. But, uh, but I mean, I'd like to end with running through a quick practice problem, so hopefully you can follow along and, and, and uh, everything I'm saying sort of makes sense to you. So this is the type of question you might get on an exam or a quiz or something like that and say something like, okay, what is the ionic strength of a solution above solid PBR? That's not PBR. <laughs> the beer, that's, a, that's lead bromide. All right, and so this is ionic strength. So we're looking for mu. Okay, it says hint refer, refer to appendix F in your tape, textbook, and if you looked in that appendix, you're going to find the KSP values, and you're going to find the KSP for lead bromide to be 5.58 times 10 to the minus 6. Okay, so these are, this is all the information we need to, to solve this question. So, so we need to think about our equilibrium process we have going on here. So we have lead bromide. Right, is a solid. Get rid of that. All right, so lead bromide is a solid, and is an equilibrium with dissolved lead here. And you can see because lead bromide is p is a, there's two brom bromides here, so that must mean that lead is two plus, and so therefore we must get two bromide bromides. And so, uh, and we know from our table that KSP equals 5.58 times 10 to the minus 6. All right, and so in order to solve this, we need to, to think about what the, what the relationship between these two are. If these are the only things in solution, we know that every time you get a lead, you must get two bromides. So we can simplify this by calling this X and this 2X. Okay, so that's going to come into play later. So now we want to use our KSP value, which we know KSP is this going to be the concentration of the products here raised to the power of the number of them that there are. So there's only one lead here, but the bromide, there's two. And so we need to put a two here, raise it to that power. Okay, and so if we simplify this, we can plug in all these values. We can plug in x here and 2x here, right? So you have 2x squared times x, and this equals ksp, which we have the value right there. So our equals 5.58 times 10 to the minus 6, right? And so if we simplify this, this uh, is going to square both of these terms before multiplying it by x. So you're going to get 4x squared times x. So that ends up being 4x cubed, right? And so we simply divide this term by the KSP value by 4 and take the cubic root of it. And so we can solve for x, and we get our x is equal to, is it equal to 1.4, sorry, it's 1. It's 1.13. times 10 to the minus 2, right? And this is a molar concentration, okay? And so we know that lead, I'll get rid of that, it's getting kind of cramped here. Um, so we know that our lead is just 1x, and so we can say that our lead concentration above a solid is 1, 1x, one so that's 1.13 times 10 to the minus 2. And since our bromide is 2x, we can say that this is just at times 2, so we get 2.26 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. All right, and now we just need to move on and figure out what the ionic strength of the solution is. And so we use our equation back here, right? And so our equation is mu ionic strength equals one half times the sum of all the ions in solution times the, their charge squared. And so we have lead in solution. And remember this is, raised, this is a charge of two. And so 
This is multiplied by 2 squared plus our bromide times the charge of that squared. So that's only a charge of 1. Okay. And so this, uh, if we plug in our values that we found before, we find this is 1 half. Uh, what's that? 1 point. 0.13 times 10 to the minus 2 times 4, right? So we just squared that, plus, let's put this whole thing in brackets here. Looks a little better. Um, 2.26 times 10 to the minus 2 times, in this case, this is just, just oh, no, it's not 2, that's just 1. So we go through, we multiply this all out. You end up with your mu equaling 3.395 times 10 to the minus 2. And this is in terms of molar, OK? So this would be the ionic strength of a solution above a solid uh, lead bromide. Okay, so that so shows that you have to use your what you understand about KSP to solve for the con equilibrium concentrations of those ions, and then you can plug those values into your equation for mu, and then solve for your ionic strength. All right, so uh, in class on Wednesday, uh, we're going to talk about how to use this ionic strength to determine the equilibrium concentrations of species uh, when. Uh, ionic strength is playing a role, and that has to deal with activity coefficients. So we'll talk about that in class tomorrow.